welcome to episode four of the Van Dyke Mortgage West Michigan Conference Sports Podcast, brought to you by Dirk Insurance Group. I'm Scott DeCamp. I am co-host of this wild ride, and I am joined by fellow co-host Tate Stein. Our third co-host, Brent Rath, has a business meeting and cannot be on today, so Tate and I are calling the shots on this fun show. So um, how was your weekend, Tate? It was all right. Pretty uneventful. I just wish it would have been four days long instead of two or three. <laughs> I don't know. Saturday was pretty eventful, seemed like. Saturday? The uh, oh, Mad Madden thing we had here, the Mad, Mad Mini Bell thing. How could I forget? Yeah, I guess I did have a little I bit of I don't want to spoil too much, but... No, no. We got to keep viewers on the edge of their seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always begin by thanking our sponsors, without whom none of this content is possible. Uh, we'll start with Grieve Law, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykeman and Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan, and John Botten, Coldwell Banker, David Dusenberry, or as Tate calls him, old Dave Dusenberry. I, I don't wise. know what that means. He I meant, meant wise and okay. distinguished. <laughs> Shied Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. And a special thank you to our title sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore, whose commitment to finding you the right home loan is second to none their experienced licensed team is ready to work with you to ensure a smooth and timely loan process from application to closing check them out at 460 west western avenue in muskegon or give them a call at 231-332-6500 last but certainly not least durga insurance group who looks at success through a different set of lenses placing the relationship with their clients first regardless of what stage you're in in life they are there for you each step of the way to offer the level of insight and care you deserve Check them out at their offices at 1535 Fire Road in Norton Shores or call them Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 231-744-9106. And with that said, we are pleased to welcome a couple new faces to the pod today. First off, we have Ken Byard, the recently retired North Muskegon principal who's exploring some other interests now, and Tommy Lauterberg, a very familiar face at just about any Whitehall athletic event. Uh, Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. So, Ken, we'll start with you. If you could kind of uh, say what's going on in your life right now. Um, I think the the moment I asked you for, I, I think I was trying to contact you for something to ask you about something. He goes, you got good timing because I just uh, retired today. I did. So, <laughs> yeah, um, 25 years in public education, uh, which started at Montague in 1996 and lasted there for nine years. Uh, headed down to Mona, Mona Shores uh, as an administrator down there. And uh, 25 years kind of just flew by and, and I bought my five years. So I was able to retire in uh, July. So my first day of school uh, was spent um, sleeping in uh, for the first time in 25 years. And so uh, enjoying that part of uh, my new life and then working now for BSN Sports uh, as a business developer. So staying involved with that and still doing some coaching uh, on the side. So you're up and down the lakeshore then, basically? Pretty much, yep. yep. Got a chance Even down to, to Kalamazoo area? I did. I actually got down to um, Otsego and said hi to your buddy. Yeah, John um, Kubiak. John Kubiak. So yep. I mentioned your name, and that got me kicked out <laughs> pretty quick. I was wondering if it was going to go one way or the other. Was, oh, yeah, so, that's good guy. I figured it might go the other way, though. Yeah, so you cut that meeting short by about 15 minutes. <laughs> is that That's not a good thing, right? Yeah. No, it's a good thing. He's a great guy. Okay, yeah, he been is. Been there a long he time. He's an awesome guy. Talk about a nice facility down there. Oh, it's Holy beautiful. Holy man. Their uh, stadium down in Otsego is kind of, kind of like a bowl, kind of like Orchard Views a little bit. Yeah. It's all turfed up and yeah. just everything. Their gym, everything about their school, everything's beautiful. Yeah, they're adding nice. a new pool, a new, uh, yeah. yeah, just good stuff down there. Well, cool. Well, thanks for being on again. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Tommy, welcome to the show. And um, I don't want to really divulge too much, but um, Tate was showing me some sort of TikTok. Um, maybe we can just let that rest, but <laughs> should I Tate or not? I don't know. I don't know. I would like to hear probably the story that he was telling me. He had uh, an interesting story at the pawn shop. So first off, yeah, what do you do in your nine to five? I help out at the pawn shop here in Whitehall, Whitehall Pawn and Coin Outlet. And then, so you were maybe taken by surprise with a TikTok that was being recorded? Yeah, I had no idea it was recorded. <laughs> I uh, showed up Tuesday for a football camp in the summer, and all the kids were telling me about it. So I found out. <laughs> when you watched it, what did you think? I was really happy. I was nice. <laughs> <laughs> 230,000 likes right now on that one. Wow. wow. Yeah, apparently it's very popular. Is that, th- is that when it gets to that number, is that like viral? viral? What's oh, yeah. viral? Viral. That's definite. That's is it? Viral. viral. See, we're just getting into that space to catch Mark with, with TikTok with 
putting a lot of our stuff on TikTok because that's where the young people are. Every time us old folks, well, I'm, I guess I'll just put myself in that group. No, I'll go in that um, group. Okay, you can hop in with me. Um, so it's um, like we find the space that we think is cool, Facebook or whatever, and they're long gone by then. The kids are oh. gone. They're finding the areas where the adults are not. For sure. Is that right, Tate? Yeah, that's mom book now. No longer <laughs> mom Facebook, book? it's mom book. <laughs> Karen book? Karen book. Karen and Stacy. Karen book. <laughs> So uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, Whitehall ties, um, uh, alumnus yes. for Whitehall. And can you tell me a little bit more about um, about your history with Whitehall and just how you became such a big time fan and supporter and assistant coach and all those things you do? Um, I was born and raised in Whitehall. Um, I actually started in fourth grade. I was uh, I lived right by the stadium, so I'd walk down Thursday, Friday nights, wait till halftime, go in free, watch the game. And uh, one night, John Furlow stopped me and he's like, "Hey, what are you doing? Said, I'm waiting to get in." You want to come in now? Sure. I'll tell you what. Help me clean up after the game, and you can get in free. So that, that's what started it. I worked every varsity fo- varsity and JV football game with John Furlow. I'd clean up the field after the game and just fell in love with being there and being around the guys and helping out. Oh, that's awesome. I think uh, between you at, at Whitehall and then Eric Greiner, just a Gu fan at Montague, I mean, you guys are like faces of the like the community and, and the thing. I just think it's really cool what you guys do to help out. So, um so I, I guess, you know, battle, battle for the Bell Week. You've got Montague at Whitehall, and you've got experience with uh, that a little bit because you were at Montague, correct? I was, yeah. So I was uh, able to, out of college at Hope, uh, got a job at Montague teaching and coaching there and uh, worked with Ken Diamond, a longtime coach there. Um, as his defensive coordinator for five or six years and then worked a couple of years with Pat when he came in. And, um, and then my last year of kind of being in the area, I coached one year at Whitehall, while still living in Montague, which goes over really well, <laughs> but working at Shores. And so uh, Andy Melboff had me on his staff as a defensive coordinator, which is really easy when you have the likes of Ryan Van Bergen and the Shields and that cast of crew. That, uh, they were tough. What, um, from your viewpoint, I mean, what makes that rivalry special or unique? Oh, there's just so many. I, it, the geography is is an obvious one, right? The bridge, um, and I just take myself back to being in that that time of the season, that week, right? Coaching at Montague, or if it was at Whitehall, the one year, um, and just the deep seated like hate, right, for the other side, like, and it's playful, I think, mm-hmm. but, but there are probably some some older folks that like it's burned down deep oh, in their yeah. souls right but um being from the outside and moving you know to the montague area um it was it was it was um, a respect um people appreciate they all knew each other right so a lot more families um and so i don't know if it was as deep seated with hate for me <laughs> more than it was just a great environment uh, lots of intensity good old-fashioned trash talk um, and just that history, and, and that, that was a fun, it was always a fun week, right? Um, an emotional high, and uh, that battle for the bell is, that's real stuff, and that's what makes high school sports so great. When you yeah. can find those rivalries, then you're just in a special spot when you can do that. Now, all, all three of you guys have that experience in that rivalry in some way, you know, shape or form. Tommy, how does it, what does that mean to you, that rivalry, and when this week comes, is it a little bit different? Yeah, it is. I mean, you'll, you grow up in this area. If you're playing sports, you're you're playing with these guys or against these guys your entire life. So by the time you get to high school and you're split up completely, you just it matters a little more. You want to win that game. You know, I, I know a lot of kids that have played that they'd take a one and eight season if that win was in the battle for the bell on Friday mm. night. And then Tate, you know, you didn't did you play football at all or not? I trying stopped to call. in middle school after that's I blew the, out my knee. That's what you said after yeah. your how many knee? It was how many times knee. you blow your knee out? Twice. Okay. Well, We'll say more like five, but <laughs> <laughs> for real, maybe twice. Yeah. So, I mean, just from your viewpoint with the, with the Battle for the Bell rivalry, um, does that kind of seep in over to other sports? I know it's kind of a fall thing. Like, it's football, based around football, of course. But, mm-hmm. you know, this week, for instance, Montague is hosting Whitehall and soccer on Wednesday. I know they, those schools playing volleyball next week. I mean, does it take on some extra meaning? And oh, What did it mean to you? Oh, yeah. I remember after uh, – after losing the bell or whatever, all those guys in the baseball season, they didn't want more than anything. They wanted more than anything to dime Whitehall, and they were willing to go 30-0, to 30-1 in the baseball <laughs> season if they had to. 
they wanted to they wanted to give it to him because it was our senior year. We didn't want to lose the belt. We just had it for what three years before that, three or four years before that. So losing it in our senior year and especially the guys around the team, it still boils their blood today. Yeah, yeah, it was thirty four fourteen last year, and like you said, Monty, you kind of had a stranglehold for a little bit on that. Um, they Monty, you does lead the all time. Rivalry by, I don't know, 64, da, 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 it was in our rivalry um, um, sto- story that we had yesterday. But on this topic, it's a good time to talk about this. And this is open for any of you guys. How does a rivalry happen? I mean, what what are the factors that maybe make that come to life? Well, I think the obvious one for me is just the, the geographical, the, the closeness, right? Shelby Hart, Montague, Whitehall, Oak Ridge, Ravana neighboring districts. Um, so that's an easy one that kind of creates rivalries. Um, competitiveness uh, creates that rivalry, uh, you know, depending on how far back you go in history. Um, some event might have started that rivalry, but mm-hmm. um, just those two in and of itself, the competitiveness and the, the location, I think are, are pretty easy ones. Yeah. What, what do you say, Tommy? I kind of agree with Ken. Yeah, you know, obviously being close together helps a lot. And then if you yeah, you have four, five, six years in a row where it's a really tight, really close game, you know, it just starts to mean a little more every year. If you know you you get snake bit a couple times, you lose by one, you lose by three, and it's like I gotta win that game, I gotta win that game, and it just snowballs. Yeah, I mean, sometimes like you said, it it could be an event. I mean, one example that I try to think back to is probably the Bad Boy Pistons and the Bulls. You know, Jordan was always that man coming through, and next thing you know, he's coming through the lane and. He's just getting hammered. Jordan rules and then and all it those ends up turning too. to the Jordan rules. You know, it always starts with one play usually, and then it starts to snowball into something great. So, there's been times where some of the greatest rivalries have started in one game. You know, I'm biting my tongue right now because you brought up Jordan. I want to bring up the Jordan Lebron <laughs> debate, but we'll save that for another time. We've already had that two episodes of that already. Thank goodness not, Brandon isn't here. Not it's podcast always episodes. Jordan. Oh, hey, always oh, Jordan. Oh, 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 hey, <laughs> Tommy. Okay, we're going to move on. Yeah, we're going to move on. Because I don't want Tate just to get up and leave, because he probably will, because he's passionate about this stuff, as we all are. Yeah. So for each of you guys, when I say who's your biggest rival, I don't mean maybe personally, but like from the school you're from, because you were, weren't you, uh, you're up north, right? Were you raised up north? Yep. So yeah, uh, graduated from Augre Sims High School. Who was, your, who was your rival then? So at the time, it's now defunct. It was Aranac Eastern. Uh, mm-hmm. So neighboring schools, uh, fairly competitive for the most part, um, didn't have the the intensity or the buildup of like a battle for the bell. We didn't play for a trophy. And I think that's what makes a rivalry. If you're playing for a trophy, it's a yeah. rivalry, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that was our high school kind of rival, was there Nick Eastern. Does, uh, I'm going to keep it here with you, does North Muskegon, who would be North Muskegon's rival? And I know that's an interesting topic. And like to me, Maybe because of geography, maybe Whitehall is in some some ways. But I mean, what would you say? Yeah, you know that's a good question. When you sent me the the t- t- a list of things we're going to talk about, I can't. I'm not sure. Like you know, geographically, we don't have a neighbor. You know, Puffers right there, but they're so much bigger than us. I mean, we still compete in some of those events that we mm-hmm. play them in. Um, it, historically, you know, North Muskegon, the size it is, always played Oak Ridge tough. Uh, you know, could that be considered a rival? Uh, Montague's close, um, you know, they're, we're always fairly competitive with them. Yeah. You know, this Catholic Central, uh, you know, our, our opening game is at a rival. So I, I don't know. I don't know if there's one in particular. I don't, I don't go back far enough in the, the annals of um, North Muskegon to say that there was a particular event that made a school a rival. But I, I don't know. Maybe it's North Muskegon versus there, the world. There was, that <laughs> <year>. <laughs> there, there was that year, and I don't remember the year, and I don't remember the exact scores, but Oak Ridge just – just crushed North Muskegon in the regular season. They met in the playoffs, and North Muskegon, they didn't flip it around, but they beat them. They I mean, them, when, yeah. I mean, it was what a regular season was what a 40 or 50 point game or right. whatever. Regular season, North Muskegon gets them. I mean, does that kind of speak to when you're talking about a rivalry because you want so badly to beat that team and you're not? I don't know. Did, 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 did maybe the rivalry component, does that kind of change the complexion of that, or is it just playing a team twice in one season more so? Well, I think, uh, you know, historically, um, you know, being the size North Muskegon is, they're still, they're always, they're always, they're always tough, right? They're going to play fundamentally sound, be aggressive, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Um, but that, that particular series, I think it was like 96, maybe Sounds Al Caraba's year was a head coach and they lost to Oak Ridge 46 to something and then yeah. ended up beating him in the district 
finals or I something? I think so. Like 12-6? Total, total flip. Yeah, though. total flip. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't around then. I do know that when I was at Montague, we hated North Muskegon. <laughs> hated them. <laughs> um, they were the country clubbers that you know wore their... Their polos tied over Side the show. Oh my god, it was I'm so funny. Gonna, I'm not getting into this now because there's a sportsmanship summit at Fremont <laughs> next week, and I already talked to David Walls about it, about some stuff that said, you know, the daddy's money and right, all this right, stuff all that and, good jazz, right, and all the stuff that you always hear about. But uh, for Tommy, obviously, it's a it's a no brainer, I would imagine. With Montague, how much do you detest those guys? It's it's hard, you know, because a lot of times I you know get to know the kids over the years, so I like a lot of the kids, but. Yeah, going into any game, absolutely want to want to win by a lot. You want to you want to beat them. You want to pound them. Yeah. And then after the game, you go and shake three or four hands and say, "Hey, how you doing? Hope I see you tomorrow. Have a good weekend." So it's it's, it's weird. It's just like that, huh? Yeah. You know what's interesting though? Like social media has has added to that, right? Like amplified. Like before, yeah. before that, you like you said, shook hands. Maybe you saw each other because you worked at the grocery store, and maybe you talked some smack, right? Mm-hmm. But now, like you win and. You've got a whole year. Do, like, oh, does yeah. it does it intensify oh, yeah. it, or does it make it more? I don't want to say cordial, but like one thing when 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 I was in high school, <laughs> we didn't like the other teams. We didn't like I didn't like Oak Ridge or whatever. Being from Ravenna, we didn't like them. Those guys were jerks. Well, as soon as you graduate and you start hanging out with those guys, you're like they're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> and so, do you think social media has changed? Kind of on that tangent, how much does that change things, Tate? Where um, these kids all know each other so well, and is that is that a good thing, a bad thing, or what? You know, it's a little. I don't want to say it's a bad thing, but like for example, like you said, I know almost everyone, and I know a few people from every team in the conference before it expanded. I knew guys from North Muskegon, knew guys from Whitehall, Oak Ridge, Ravana, blah blah blah. And so when you got into the game, you know, it wasn't like I don't know this guy at all. You knew exactly who it was, but that sort of amplified it for me. Like I knew this guy. I'm a good buddy of his, but. I'm going to drop 20 on his head. And that's just, maybe that's just me. (laughs) But I have a feeling that that resonates with a few people that are my age. Yeah. So so a lot of these uh, rivalries, I mean, we kind of know them. You you called a lot of them out already. You know, uh, Whitehall, Montague, uh, Ravana, Oak Ridge, Hart, Shelby. What are some of the other ones you say, especially in the expanded um, West Mission Conference? What what are the ones that come to mind for you you guys and you guys can chime in when you want? Uh, so I'll go back to geography. Ludington, Manistee, I would assume they're probably one. That's one of the state's longest, in fact. Is it really? Yep. Okay. It's like top five, I think, in terms of n- um, number of years that they've played. Right. Um, to me, what's intriguing is the the rival, the rival, schools that have joined, um, and what will their rivalries be? Mm-hmm. Who will they be? Like, who is Fremont's yeah. rival, right? Like, who's Holton's rival? And those schools that maybe now have a chance – um, to establish some rivalries and not have to travel so far to do that. That's mm-hmm. that would be exciting for me if I'm a school in their position. Yeah. Yeah. So any anything else from you guys on that? Uh, you know, the old Oak Ridge Orchard View, you know, Battle of Apple Avenue. You know, getting that view back every year would be nice to see. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, OB improves over the next couple of years and it really is a battle again. Yeah. yeah. Hesperia Holton's been going on. That was in uh, the CSAA most recently, but both those teams came over. But they're, again, kind of neighboring. There you go, neighboring rivals again. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think Ravana North Muskegon, just because there there's similarities in terms of, obviously, school size, but in terms of competitive teams in those, in those different sports, obviously North Muskegon, you know, is, is really good, and a couple others like uh, soccer and tennis where Ravana doesn't have tennis, and then they, you know, soccer, they, they were, mm-hmm. their program's not as established, obviously going back, but um, I think that's a good one, too, because there's been some good basketball and football matchups. Yeah, that, that, that'll turn into something. If there's a blossoming rivalry for North Muskegon, it'll be Ravana. Mm-hmm. They'll end up playing each other in districts and all that stuff, and yeah. probably all the sports. Yeah, you know, and I uh, think uh, week seven, we did switch our game of the week to that North Muskegon-Ravana game, just anticipating that's probably going to or could very likely decide that the Rivers Division title in that game. Yeah, we'll hope. see what happens. Right. But, um, you know, what do we know about um, – what do you know about those other new teams? Anything else that you guys have to add about that, about what they bring to the table in the conference and, and you know, what might play into some of those developing rivalries? I'm just curious as to – we've talked about it before on the podcast. For some of these teams that maybe aren't competitive right now, 
if some of these teams can elevate their level of play because, you know, eventually, I don't want to say you get sick of losing, but you're going to have to find a way to compete and maybe some of these smaller schools that are facing off in the Rivers division that maybe, you know, they don't usually have a program. Maybe this is a way for them to elevate their programs, elevate that level of play. And I hope that does happen because that just benefits everybody. You know, don't kind of on another tangent, I think what made the West Michigan Conference so good in a lot of ways, especially in like a sport like football, mm-hmm. was trying to keep up with the Joneses in some yeah. ways. You have to, like if you have an Oak Ridge or whatever, Montague, Ravana had its run there, and um, where you're trying to um, just keep up with those other programs. North Muskegon was strong, you know, throughout 70s and 80s, and obviously going way back before that. But I think, don't you have to just kind of up your game, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, competition makes you better, right? And so maybe some of those uh, schools that are new to the league, um, maybe now they get more administrative support. Maybe they um, get more community support, and that drives them to be better because you do want to keep up with the Joneses. And so mm-hmm. um, that that layer of support doesn't just stop with coaches and kids, right? It filters down to the community, and they take pride in that. And um, th- that's a great point, Tate, like – this new alliance, maybe that creates more competition and Mm -hmm. competition's good. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, like, I just saw, you know, obviously Whitehall just got the VAC Center and now Montague's going with the new mill. And I wonder if this is some sort of way to maybe attract some kids. I hope so. I hope maybe some kids will see that we got a new gym, we got new facilities, and maybe that can raise the amount of talent and level that's coming here. Oh, Tommy, you lived here your whole life in White Lake, so... (laughs) <laughs> maybe in sports, but in other ways. What are the ways that Montague and Whitehall, you think, are trying to kind of match each other in different ways? Like, oh, Whitehall's got the VAC. What are we going to do? Now Now Montague's going to build a facility mm-hmm. and, and just those things. I mean, how often have you seen that where what, something happens on one side of the bridge and then, oh, they're doing it now too, or or they won't do it just because just to spite the other side? Yeah, I think it happens. You know, you something opens up here, something opens up there, you know. Kids are trying to, you know, hey, we got this new cool thing. You know, we got the movie theater. We got this restaurant. We got that place. Yeah. You know, we got the place to hang out. And then, yeah, Whitehall builds the VAC, and now Montague's going for something. You know, and <laughs> I, I know the big debate in football is, is turf at some point. You know, who's going to be the first one to get turf, and mm-hmm. how long does everyone take to follow? And there's ways that you want to take the next step to stay ahead of the other guys. I'm trying to remember we did the uh, player profiles where we get the kids on camera and ask them fun, goofy questions, and – Trying to remember who that was. Might have been Nick Blanchard last year, where um, talking about Whitehall Montague. He said, "Well, we got all the restaurants over here. <laughs> like, what? What do you mean? Which restaurants? Taco Bell, Burger King." I go, right "That's fine dining." <laughs> <laughs> you went right for the six dollar dinner. Yeah, so. hey, it's hard to beat a chalupa. It is hard to beat a chalupa. <laughs> Just saying. What about the bargain bundle? All day. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had that? I've never had a bargain bundle. You know where that's from? No. Do you? You can tell where you guys are from if you don't know where that is. Bargain bundle. Have you guys ever been uh, south of Whitehall or, or not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've escaped Whitehall. <laughs> There's a place called Mr. Quick's. The burger oh, bundle. The, bar- the bargain bundle, yeah. You can get the cheeseburgers, hamburgers. I'm again, a, I'm talking about food again. I'm not a big Mr. Quick guy. I feel like that's straight greasy. But you like uh, the other places, though? What's yeah, your place? All right. They're that aren't right. that aren't greasy like Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's fine. See, when that's you're young, you can get away with that, <laughs> eating that stuff. Yeah, that's the truth. What's your place, Tommy? Your your fast food place? No, nope, got to go post-game tradition Thursday nights after JV games. Me and Dan Meyer, it's always Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Straight up the dollar menu. So um, just being from the Muskegon area, not Muskegon proper, but I always tell people, there's staples in Muskegon when it comes to those types of places. There's that, there's g and mm-hmm. and then there's Mr. Scribbs. So mm-hmm. I mean, if you grew up in Muskegon area, then, because there's people I know that didn't grow up in the area that have it, and they're like, it's nothing great. They don't know. But, <laughs> they don't know. But you were, you're from out of the area, but you've lived here not long enough yeah. now. Yeah, long enough to know that it is Mr. Scribbs, and yeah. it's <laughs> Mr. Quick, and it is g and yeah. yeah, I know that much. Are there any others that need to be in that rotation? Gosh, according to my son, Jay Burger Wings, like... Oh, all day I've long, like bro. It's on Apple. You can't spend all that money on Jay Burger. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Speaking of your son, uh, obviously he looks like he's having a really nice season. 
uh, so far for North Muskegon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sophomore on varsity, uh, TJ works his butt off. I was just telling Tate because he said he had some nice pictures of some catches he made. And, um, you know, he's a kid that just is laser focus, um, trains on his own, does his own stuff, loves to work out. Um, yeah, so we're just going to hope that he stays healthy and uh, continues to work hard and we'll see what happens he's got a nice frame to him how tall is he yeah he's probably um i'm gonna undersell him uh he's probably six one six two no, he's I'm, supposed to go the other way no because i want to be taller <laughs> than him no. so i'm gonna <laughs> so i'm gonna say he's six foot because i'm six foot but he's probably six two six one somewhere there but so i think i saw you guys were at hope college at that game and um one thing in you have you been to hope college to watch some games too yeah. to watch see that's what i think is really cool i did a story last fall on the West Michigan Conference Connections at Hope College. So you had uh, Luke Marsh, uh, T.J. McKenzie, mm-hmm. um, Terrell. Terrell Harris. I mean, I, th- I know um, Harger, Jesse. Harger's kid, Jesse. Yep, Je- yep Jesse Cook was there. Um, gosh, who else am I missing? Obviously, Bryce Stark was there for a while. You had um, Johnny was there playing mm-hmm. as well. well. Yeah, so you – but, I mean, how cool is that to see? And you were just there, but to see – still have that a pretty good connection there and that schools like Hope College, which has been pretty, had a pretty consistent, solid program over the years that they're recognizing that talent in the West Michigan Conference. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you think about 1% of high school kids going to play college sports at any level mm. um, and, and any college opportunity is a great opportunity and Hope's no exception to that, um, being an alum too. Uh, Coach Sturz and I actually played together. Awesome. He was yeah. a senior when I was a freshman, I think it was. He was a stud. That dude was built different. Oh, um, and so I can see why he's having the success he does now. He's uh, extremely engaging, uh, a lot of energy, positive. Um, but, yeah, just to go down there and catch all those guys, and, and TJ had a great uh, catch that he turned a three-yard hitch into a 75-yard touchdown and <laughs> essentially won the game with that. Uh, jesse has got a broken foot right now, but he's supposed to come back. Terrell had a great game. Um, and so for them to recognize the talent that's coming out of the West Michigan Conference says a lot about uh, – the level of competition, the the, the coaching uh, in the area, um, and it just uh, continues to solidify the fact that, you know, Muskegon County, as far as football in the state of Michigan, is right up there with, with the best of them. No, and um, taking that one step further, those, those guys used to want to beat the heck out of each other when they played each other in various sports, but how cool, Tommy, is it to see where they're actually, um, you know, really good friends and, and, and support each other, and they're all moving to that common goal. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I think a bunch of them actually even live together. Now. They do, yeah. yeah. Once, once you get out of high school, you realize, you know, rivalries are great, but this dude's got the same goals I have. He's doing the same stuff I have. You hang out a little bit, and you end up living together, and you end up playing really well together. It's, it's awesome to see. Yeah, Jesse, TJ, and Terrell all live together. <laughs> I think there's one more uh, kid that went to Whitehall, G- Garrett? G- oh, Gavin Schaefer. Yeah, yeah, Gavin, that's right. Yeah, he's with them, too. Oh, so. yeah, Gavin. Yep. How, is that – um. Think about that for the guys that know those guys. Is that a scary proposition, those guys living together? <laughs> I mean, so I <laughs> I asked Kim Cook, Jesse's mom, about how clean the or how clean the, the house was, and she's like, Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Pleading the fifth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just don't go in there with bare feet. <laughs> I mean, you you're you're um, playing basketball at Muskegon Community College and in terms of the rivalry component, any does has that come into play yet? I mean, I know you're early in the game there, but like you've got um, Dayton Cole. I don't know if he was a was a if you if he was like an arch rival, even though you play for arch rival oh, yeah. schools. But I mean, what's that dynamic like when when guys do come together and start playing together? You know, after being rivals. Right. Yeah. So we had to get to know each other. You know, because at first we were just competitors, and he's a competitive guy. I'm a competitive guy. But now. You know, we're always messing around during practice. Like, I was talking to Mr. Byard and uh, Tommy over here, and I was talking about how, uh, like, in a practice, Dane Coles, he's redshirt right now, but he still plays in open gym, and he'll go on a fast break, and he'll just go between the legs, throw it down, almost bring the hoop down, and then he'll be feeling himself, and I'll go, just don't meet me at the rim. You don't want to see me up there. And little do you guys know, I can't. I'm not getting up there. I am not. I don't have hops No, we like already that. know. You don't need <laughs> to tell us that. We've just watched look you. at me. Just look at me. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm always talk. messing around with them. I'm telling them, don't come in the lane. I'm packing you. You don't want to be here. I'm a big body. So once you get to know the guy, it's fun. No, it's funny. That's kind of how it works is you get to know guys on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, these are really, really good, really cool guys. So, yeah. But um, 
Like, who are, who would you say is the biggest rivalry? What what is the biggest rivalry in the West Michigan Conference? Now, this is where we can kind of go different ways on it, probably. But we'll start with Tommy, and I can kind of think about what he's going to say. But it's hard not to be biased and just say <laughs> Whitehall Montague. Mm-hmm. I think depending on who you ask in the conference, there might be some people who would say that, and then you're obviously going to have the Oakwood Ravana guys who are going to say that. I mean, Hart and Shelby are going to say they're the biggest rivalry. You know, it just depends on where you're from. I think. Um, Football specific, I think I would say Whitehall Montague. You know, the battle for the bell, how long they've been playing, and just how much it means to both both towns, both districts. And um, yeah, state your case a little more. What and why? What are the things you've seen? Obviously, the bell, the trophy, like Ken said earlier, is a big part of it. Anytime you got that tangible thing, mm-hmm. you're playing for. Obviously, when both teams are good, um, that that really helps too in terms of uh, um, just raising those stakes a little bit. But like, what are some of the more intense moments? I guess you've seen that that maybe um, or, or maybe aspects of it that really show why you think it that's the best one. Um, you go back just, you know, the history, how long they've been playing, how many times they've played. You look even in recent history, the number of, you know, there's the, the double overtime game a couple of years ago. There was two or three one-point games recently. You know, these are guys who just, they're given everything. You've, you know, you've had, you know, guys who've gone either side of the bridge who maybe started at Montague ended up at Whitehall or started at Whitehall ended up at Montague and just the intensity of it and, these are guys a lot of times you'll see, you know, might be best friends off the field, want to kill each other on Friday nights. I mean, you, you don't get that in a lot of high school rivalries. Yeah, I think he brings up a good point, the, the White Lake area youth sports. And the, all those kids played together growing up. They aren't, you know, exclusive to Montague or Whitehall, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I don't think Ravenna, Oak Ridge, they have that combining at youth sports, right? They probably have their no, own. No, they have their own, yeah. Right, and so that just adds a different layer to that 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 rivalry that, to me, like, Tommy said makes it the the rivalry right mm-hmm. in the area um, because they've grown up playing with each other. And now all of a sudden, you know, so many years later they're playing against each other, and that just adds a completely different dynamic. Mm-hmm. No, and I I can't dispute that. Even though I grew up in the Ravana Oak Ridge rivalry, which again that's a geography one, but it's also like if you go back to maybe the late '80s and into the '90s, those were two of the premier football schools in the conference. So there was always a lot at stake there too. Um, playing for those that, you know, playing in those games. But I got to kind of, I have to, I have to pit you guys against each other. What, why is Whitehall so great and why is Montague suck just in general? Tommy, you're up. (laughs) 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 You know, it's just, when you're around athletics, especially, it's it's just, it's ingrained in you, you know, kind of like the Michigan Ohio State rivalry. You know, it's, you know, your parents are telling you this, your friends are telling you this, your cousins are telling you this, everybody, you know, it's, you know, you play for Whitehall, you got to hate Montague is what you got to do. Then like again, you, you play basketball with the guys on the weekend because you're playing youth sports together, and you're like, oh, these guys are good guys. And then, you know, you're a freshman in high school, and you throw on a Whitehall jersey, or if you're at Monty, you throw on a Monty jersey, and now it's like, hey, I'll see you tomorrow to play basketball, but tonight I'm gonna pound your face in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, you have the floor now, Tate. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> as I went through, you know, speaking on, you know, why Montague over Whitehall. Being a Montague guy, I knew all the guys in Montague. I knew what they were like. Obviously, none of us are perfect, but. I feel like we're kind of hard nosed hard workers, you know. We kind of we like to get down and dirty. We're diving on the floor for loose balls. We're doing the hustle stuff. Some Whitehall guys aren't all about that. Sometimes they're the type of guys they like to, you know, get a nice bucket, make a nice play, and they're looking into the stands. Not saying, you know, there's not exceptions for that in Montague, but I feel like there's a little more grit in Montague. But sometimes grit isn't the whole factor, and that's why sometimes Whitehall will come out on top. Well, I think uh, I need to afford Tommy the opportunity for a rebuttal on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, that's something that's been said about Whitehall over the years. Is a lot of times, yeah, Monty was just tougher. They were, you know, they were they were willing to do the dirty stuff. They were willing to take the extra, you know, the extra hit, the extra mile. And that's, you know, where I, I give Sig a lot of credit with our football program is he's, he's built that mentality in a lot of our kids now when yeah. they're in the weight room and they, they believe that you've got to be you've got to be the tougher guy. You've got to be the stronger. You've got to be willing to die for those loose balls to mm-hmm. to fight at the bottom of a fumble pile. You know, I mean, it's it's important. Yeah. What what have you seen from your vantage point? I mean, you've been in it both sides, and then yeah. obviously in the conference at another school where you can kind of step outside and kind of look back at it. Yeah, so I th- you know I think back to um, specifically to what Tommy said about uh, you know the building the mentality, building the grit, and how Whitehall has that now, and the times that I was at Montague when I coached there for nine years. Uh, we felt like we had that grit, that kids uh, would wake up to milk the cow, 
drive five miles, ride their bikes five miles to go work out in the morning at seven, ride back home, and then come back in the afternoon. It's like, dang, this dude wants it, right? Mm-hmm. Like that good, he's gonna grind it. And and the year I was at Whitehall, it was uh, you didn't have that, right? The kids were at the beach or they were on the boat, and mm-hmm. um, you know I went in there pretty guns blazing, seeing you guys are soft, right? And that's changed, um, yeah. but that was kind of the. You know, when you look at the two communities, um, that's kind of the perception that I think that's out there. But I, I think that's changing. Yeah. Um, and and if you want to be uh, competitive in any sports now, you have to do all the other stuff, right? Things that we didn't necessarily have to do back in the day. Mm-hmm. Those are required. You know, you have to take the lifting class. You have to get bigger, faster, stronger, all those things if you want to compete, right? And Again, it's about keeping up with the Joneses. Right, yeah. and, and Whitehall certainly is doing that. Now, Whitehall... People have asked me this, you know, what, how do they look this year? And I said this in the summer, the times that I'd seen them, I go, they just look a little different. They, there's just something about them that's a little different now that time will tell. But in the first three weeks, they looked the part of where I thought they could or should be. Um, you're, you're around the program. You're in the program. Is there a difference, do you think, with this year's team as opposed to maybe past Whitehall teams or recent Whitehall teams? Uh, you know, we've got a really good group of kids that have, I mean, across the board, have, they've bought into doing the stuff that sucks. You know, they bought into being at weight training all summer. They bought into m- making every camp, every seven on seven. You know, we got a little bit of depth we maybe haven't had in years past where it's like, you know, oh, I'm the right guard. My job's safe. Well, no, because now there's somebody behind you that's pushing you, and he's in the weight room every day. And if you're messing up, he's going to come and take your job, which we necessarily haven't had in the past. Got a lot of dudes, as they say. A lot of dudes. dudes. There's a lot of dudes on that roster. Loaded. Good year for us to not play them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know North Wisconsin and Ravenna are like, ah, no, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. We'll stay in our lane. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, and what have you seen? You've seen Montague a couple times now. Uh, what, what have you, what do you see in Montague and this Montague team? We've lost, you know, a couple guys, a couple dogs, a couple dudes, but we definitely have some talent that we've retained. And I've been impressed by the defensive line, especially in these first few weeks. And that's such a big component. Like I talk about, you know, you can win games with skill players, but championships are probably one of the trenches. Sure. And so we got a couple big guys. I'm a little bit worried about a few missing holes and components, and they might be a few missing pieces away from Whitehall. But a Montague-Whitehall game, anything can happen. Absolutely. So I'm very curious to see what happens mm-hmm. this next week. Yeah, so now that this is the most natural time to ask this, I mean, who do we think is going to win the, the battle for the bell this Friday? I want to hear the neutral opinion. That would be me. Yeah, that would be you. <laughs> um, I just think Whitehall has a lot of dudes and a lot of depth, and so um, I'm going to go with them. Tommy? Well, seeing as I'm going to be on the field <laughs> on Thursday night and then in the box on Friday night, I just I want to see two really good football games between our JVs and our varsities. You're not going to call your shot? Nope. All right. <laughs> I can respect that. Tate? Oh, no. Uh, do I say what? <laughs> do I say what I truly believe? Or do I say what I don't? Uh, they say honesty is the best policy. I love all my guys at Montague. I think Whitehall might edge them out in this one. And I hate to say that because I know so many guys and I love so many guys on that team, but I think Whitehall's got this one. Yeah, like you said, in a rivalry game, you never know. Never know. About yeah. some of those um, intangible factors that, that might, might crop up and – you know, over the years, Montague just has been tough-minded and knows how to win in these big games. But like I said, I think Whitehall's just a little bit different this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just really like the looks of them. I'm, I'm going to have to pick Whitehall in this one, but we'll get more into that and the details, you know, Thursday with uh, On the Mark and more discussion on that. But um, on a related topic, so we found out last week or the end of last week that they're not going to do the coin toss. And I know this can be a little bit of a lightning rod type thing. Maybe it's different approaches from each community. Um, generally speaking, sounds like by and large, and this doesn't apply to everybody. It's a, it's a generalization that Whitehall didn't wasn't interested in doing it. We want to focus on on the football game. We want to do all this other stuff. Montague's are like, I don't know. You know, we want to do it. What's the issue? I mean, what do you guys think of like a tradition like that? And I mean, does it have its place? I mean. Who's right and who's wrong, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. I mean, if you're asking me personally, I, I can see where Tony's coming from. They just want to take care of business. 
But at the same time, you know, what's a, an hour to walk to the bridge and flip a coin, mm. you know? So to me, uh, I'm more of a traditionalist in that manner. That's the kind of stuff that adds to the legacy and the, the, the glamour of that rivalry. Um, and if it takes up an hour, then, you know, maybe it just takes up an hour, but you know, th- 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 he's not wrong for having that opinion either. What do you, what do you think, Tommy? I think it's kind of an awkward thing where you have, you know, like, do you do it Sunday night and it's five days before the game and you forget about it before the game? Or do you try and fit it in somewhere Thursday where it's like, well, coaches are trying to go through walkthrough and team dinner and get to the JV game. And I just, I mean, there's really no good time to do it. And I know the kid, some of the kids like it. I know it's just, yeah, I don't know if there's really a great way to do it where it's not a distraction when you want to just focus on one of the bigger games on the schedule. Right. No, I'm kind of more of a traditionalist, too. I like to see a tradition like that where it's something that happens, it reoccurs every year, and, you know, you continue to do it because it adds to it. It's something that's just another component that makes it mean a little bit more. And so he's not in the wrong for not wanting to coach Sigmund, so I completely understand, but I just like doing those little type of things before him. Yeah. No, oh, for me, and, and again, I'm not privy to those conversations over at Whitehall in terms of everything that goes into that. I, mean, I know there's probably other concerns and things that were – reasons not to but for me just you know all things being equal that's what I love and remember and and really cherish about high school sports are all those traditions and it's like yeah I remember playing the games but for me it's a lot of the stuff around it too like when Ravana had some really good teams that won state titles I was being and I wasn't on those teams because we were we were pretty good but not that good (laughs) those guys actually got it done um it's all the other stuff, the stories we still tell all these years later about just the funny stuff that happened and, you know, on bus trips and just all that other stuff. So to me, and as an outsider, too, to the Mon- Montague Whitehall rivalry, I covered that a couple of times when I was with them live, the, the coin toss. It was pretty awesome to see the communities, you know, teams marching, bands marching kind of from one, both the different directions and meeting in the middle. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was, it was kind of a cool thing and u- unique. Right. For those communities. Yeah. yeah. It's like stuff movies are written. Like you see yeah. that in a movie, right? Like yeah. this team, they're coming to the bridge. And, mm-hmm. and there's only so many things that happen in Montague Way. I mean, like Montague, you got what, 2,000 people for a population. There's only so many events that go on and just it takes away another yeah. one when you don't do it. So on that uh, rivalry tangent, who is or what is the best rivalry in sports? All of sports? All of sports. Ooh. Jeez. Lordy. Do you know? Do you know, Scott? I think it's all about your perspective. Yeah. Um, I think anybody against Ohio State (laughs) is a fair. (laughs) Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, That's a pretty solid answer. Michigan, Ohio State's (laughs) always there. Duke, North Carolina, basketball. Duke, North Carolina. I mean, Auburn, Alabama. I mean, there's just, and you can take it to the professional levels. Yeah. Yankees, Red Sox. Yankees, yeah. Baseball fans will say Yankees, Red Sox. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. For you, for each of you, what what is the most special, I guess, rivalry that you hold closest to your hearts? Yeah, I don't know if it's the most special, but the one that that uh, that I remember the most, uh, being a, a Hope kid or a Hope grad, uh, was the Hope Calvin basketball rivalry, mm-hmm. and that that was a big deal. You know, it's no North Carolina Duke, but um, we used to get up early and get a line and all that stuff, and you know, do the tailgating as much as you could do at Hope. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that was that was a big deal, you know. You draw off, you know a few thousand people. It's on TV, oh. and back then not everything was broadcasted, so that was mm-hmm. fun. But we had some good memories with watching the Hope Calvin. It was rivalry. just a few years ago. I was looking at stats on that rivalry, and it was not only was the series tied or close to it, but the the total points scored by each team was almost dead on the money. It was re- crazy. That's crazy. I just, I saw that. I'm like, wow, that's the definition of a rivalry there. Yeah. <laughs> so um. What about for you, Tate? Um, I don't know if I obviously there's the Montague White Hall. Jordan and LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go you go to college and you got Michigan, Michigan State, and then professionals. But I think one thing that really stuck with me is either Michigan and Michigan State or Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Because my dad, he's from Pennsylvania. And he gave me an excuse to not be a Lions fan, which is such a blessing. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm still I'm still a Lions fan in my heart, but if I have an opportunity to cheer for a different team, I'm gonna take That's it. That's why I wonder when I texted you yesterday and hashtag one pride and then the, then after something bad happened for the Lions, hashtag meow. Hashtag meow. <laughs> <laughs> I got a kick out of that one. 
<laughs> but no, I think probably between those two, I'd pick Michigan and Michigan State because I have so many friends from around the area that are so split up and so diversified to Michigan and Michigan State. It's and it's just such a great rivalry overall, and it's an old one. It's lasted, you know, for such a long time. And I, you know, I'm a Michigan State grad, and obviously, Ken, your daughter's going to she is, Michigan yeah. State now. And did you grow up a Michigan fan? And still a Michigan fan? Yeah, I mean, so I was a military brat, so we moved all over. Yeah, um, I'm a diehard diehard Cowboys fan because that's the game they used to always show overseas oh, yeah. when we lived in Korea and Germany. It was all there was always a, a Cowboys game on, so I kind of by default. Um, but uh, just to add to the rivalry thing, um, Alabama Auburn. When I lived in Alabama for 18 months, like that state shut down that <laughs> Saturday and you had to pick a side. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I want to see a good. No, mm-hmm. you're either Ab- Alabama, Auburn, pick it. I'm like, oh, OK. I'm not I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying it when people said maybe it is, but I just have a hard time seeing it is when people say, why well, cheer for so and so when they're not playing so and so? <laughs> no, you're not. No, you. No one does no, that. No. Don't give me that. <laughs> Unless it's Ohio State. Right. <laughs> well, there's also the expression I use: the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> yeah. Fair. So, so you gotta, so you gotta use that coming into play. But what about you, Tommy? What's uh, to you? What's the? What do you think the coolest rivalry? The one that really gets you juiced up the most? I mean, I don't, they don't play much anymore. But I just, uh, it was it was hockey. Actually. It was the Red Wings and the Avalanche. Oh, mm, yeah. In the nineties, I Good loved one. those games. Mm-hmm. Did you watch that special they had? Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, you, you said so that good. was amazing. Uh, Did you see that tape? No, I haven't. You have to watch that seriously. And it was called Rivalry, wasn't it? I believe it was. Yeah. I mean, how watching that just because that's a good topic for discussion too on rivalries. I mean, how intense was that, and how many memories did that bring back just watching that? No, oh, tons. I mean, from the initial, you know, the hit that started it all to mm-hmm. the brawl at the Joe when they finally, you know, took their payback and kind of what got them over the hump you know to go on to win those stanley cups was you got to get tougher and they finally figured out a way to do it yeah. after that what do you remember about that it, it's uh, just the intensity and like uh, i'm not a hockey fan but those years watching that rivalry was those are special and watching that that special now that those guys really hate each other <laughs> like it's not like 30 <laughs> years and like oh you know we made like they still hate each other <laughs> that's a rivalry mm, do you yeah. think uh lemieux and and mccarty were just putting it on for the camera or do you think they actually are friends now yeah i don't I, it probably depends on what day you ask him. <laughs> <laughs> i can see darren mccarty still hate him yeah. he, he seems like the one that carried the grudge for him. Yeah. Just the way he played the way he was so anything else um in terms of the intensity thing i mean what else have you guys seen that just kind of takes it up to another level in, in the rivalries that you've seen? And even, I mean, any own, of your own experiences in any of those kind of rivalry um, type scenarios? I'm looking at you, Tate. Yeah, there's some things that happen off the field, too, <laughs> that kind of, you know, amplify things. Be careful. No, yeah, I'm going to bite my tongue <laughs> on some things. You know, there was, even in high school, there are some things that happen off the field that would carry onto the field for us, and then it just means that much more to beat them. And there'd be a little more jaw jacking going on during that game too. But there's definitely a few factors that can come from outside the court or outside the field that bring it onto that. So, so that was fun with the. Um, and I know I'm spoiling it again. Although this is going to be out before this podcast comes out. Okay. Is the Madden we had a. Oh yeah. We came up with the idea of having a, a a mini, mini bell Madden tournament, where we invited X amount of players from out of you, X amount of players from way all. Wanted to get the same number of kids from each side. Um, end up getting like six Whitehall kids and like three Montague kids yeah. where they one at a time would face off, have two kids playing each other in Madden 23, and then their teammates would be behind them cheering them on and stuff. And <laughs> It was just funny because there was one guy where uh, James Cloud for Montague um, oh, wow. where he was just – he, he, I'm not going to name the names of who he was beating, but he beat him pretty bad, and <laughs> the response from Whitehall was like, We'll see you guys on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was something said while playing man that it was like, you know, come on, come on. We'll see you. We'll see you on Friday. Why are you so good at this? <laughs> Why don't you do this on the field? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. So, but um, on that topic, I mean, as far as social media and as far as um, stuff like video games and whatnot, I mean, does that happen a lot with, with, like, the younger generation? And, I mean, you've got a son. I don't know if he's a gamer or not and plays any of those games, but do you see a lot of that? Is there a lot of uh, playing each other and then trash talk going on? Well, I think it goes back to what Tate said. Like, they all know each other now, mm-hmm. which is so foreign to me. You know, I didn't know any of those guys that I played against. Um, 
And so they all know each other and they're like friends and talking and stuff. I'm like, well, how do you know that guy? <laughs> Snapchat, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, oh, geez. So, I mean, does it add to that? I'm sure it adds to the trash talk, but, you know, maybe it adds to, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with meeting more people, right? And mm-hmm. so maybe that's a healthy thing, too, that they have the opportunity to do that. Um, but I have to believe that the, the social media possibilities uh, adds fuel to the fire sometimes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because you can talk to your guy, talk to your boy before the game, and you're telling them about all the things, all the mayhem you're going to cause on this team before you even start playing. And that's just that's just a new part of it. I mean, I can't believe that. When you when you were all in school, that you didn't know anyone besides like maybe across the bridge. That's no, it, it, yeah. no, and that yeah, is it was. Uh, I mean, you knew them just from playing them in sports, basically. For me, at least, I mean, you didn't. There wasn't social media then, right? So, you just did not know about you what there you grew up if what that was like. No, yeah, you, you knew the Montague guys because they were right across the bridge, you know, and you, you maybe recognized a few names and you looked at the paper of you know some of the guys who were doing big things for other schools, but mm-hmm. yeah, you didn't. You know, unless you were one of those rare kids that did play like a travel basketball or something at that time, you know, you really didn't know anybody. Yeah, that's a good point. Travel's really kind of expanded mm-hmm. the, the boundaries of who your circles are now. And, um, you know, all those guys from different schools play with each other all summer long. And so mm-hmm. Yeah, it adds like in to that. basketball, baseball, like Shoreline Sticks. I think there's right, quite a few West Michigan Conference kids on that. Was there real travel back when you were in school? There was. It was Connie Mack, like in baseball. Mm. Basketball, there might be some summer events but no travel there wasn't anything no such thing as that nope I mean, you had to be really really good to be on some sort of au or travel thing it just, yeah they weren't around i played on so the year i graduated i played on the ground Rapids A's, which was kind of a i guess as close to travel as you're going to get mm-hmm. you know we'd go around and play like in battle creek and mm-hmm. kalamazoo and maybe out of out of state time to time but not like it is now yeah so um what other um, smack talk can we get going for the, for the week of the big game, Tate? For the week of the – between who? Between – Montague and Whitehall. Oh, I'm not going to start any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I only have so much room to talk. I didn't play any football past middle school. <laughs> that was back when I was in my prime, by the way. Before the, <laughs> before the five knee injuries? <laughs> before, yeah. <laughs> it was only two, but there was a whole ordeal with the doctor, which it was like – there was a lot of blowouts, but – Whatever. That's so where – like story. that rivalry in particular, like if you look at football, but maybe even basketball, where is that going? With with Montague and Whitehall, I mean, you see what it is now and what's been, but where's it going? You know, when you look at the futures of those respective programs. Hmm. I mean, right now, I feel like Whitehall, all athletics are on a different level than Montague, and I don't know how long that's gonna last. I don't know if that will last, but Whitehall, right now, if I look at their roster and the kids they got for football, basketball, even tennis, golf, they're they're a little bit they're a step above Montague right now and I don't know how that will change in the next few years though I'm not sure oh they're they're you know a bigger school but they've been a bigger school and, but Montague's always kind of they've kept obviously up. more than held their own yeah. in that, that, that but going back to Ken's point too I think it does change the dynamic when these kids grow up playing sports together on the same teams and I've been getting photos shared with me on like with you know maybe Michael Moore and um you know, Kyle Stratton playing on the same teams, and then they were playing each other in, in Madden the other day, and, yeah. which we don't have to divulge who won that one. <laughs> Let's just say it, it was looking better for the Red Squad. Let's just say Michael Moore <laughs> spends five days a week on Madden, and he still lost. <laughs> Come on, Mike. <laughs> Come on, Mike. <laughs> so any other thoughts on, on this big week and just uh, rivalries in the league? No, I'm, I'm excited with the new league to see what rivalries – start to blossom right? right and see how that all ties in and, and making this shift to a larger conference uh all that it can be and should be and they don't all happen on the same week either there's yeah. always they're spread out it's not like it's just rivalry week and that's it right but when they did have the week where it was um montague whitehall ravana oak ridge hart shelby north muskegon mason county that was one heck of a rivalry wasn't it <laughs> yeah, sure <laughs> <laughs> You guys have so much in common. So much. <laughs> so just out of ignorance, I don't know for short on time, but no, we're uh, good. does does Oak Ridge, Ravana, do they do those sorts of things outside of the game? Meeting somewhere, they don't. doing stuff, and that's bonfires, what, stuff like that. And they don't. The only time that I think they've ever done anything was when my brother was in school and it wasn't a formal thing. They practiced together when they were both in the playoffs. Like they're in different divisions. So right. at that point they'd already played each other in the season. 
and I think Ravana went over to Oak Ridge and Dusty and, and Jack got their teams together and had a kumbaya moment and, and helped each other you know, out. Helped each other out a little bit. So I think you see that you see that every now and then. Um, I don't did you see it a lot back then? Probably not, but do, do we see it more now? I don't know. You see school you obviously here like in the NFL joint practices teams you know practicing together. Um, but yeah, could that that could probably be some issues if you got some rival schools doing that maybe or not? Can you imagine uh, Montague Whitehall practicing together maybe down the road? Not after they'd already played? <laughs> maybe not. That'd be a worse time afterwards. Yeah. I might get a little chippy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. Um, Ken and Tommy, thanks for coming on today. It was a pleasure having you both on. Uh, Ken, we're going to be seeing more of you on this podcast. So, But thanks to both of you guys. No problem. Uh, and thanks again to our sponsors as well. Uh, that's Grieve Law. Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykeman, and Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan and John Botten, uh, Coldwell Banker with David Dusenberry. I'm going to leave the uh, adjective out of there this time. Um, Shied Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, and then our title sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore and Dirk Insurance Group. Uh, this is Episode 4 of the Catchmark Sportsnet Podcast. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon, everybody.